All righty, folks. Hello, hello. Let me pop over here so y'all can see me. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Adobe Live. My name is Voodoo Val, and I'm going to be your host this morning for another Photoshop challenge. I'm super pumped about it. It's going to be awesome. Um, I see so many familiar faces in the live chat. It's good to see you, Paula. General Kenobi, hello there. Um, I see Bliss, I see Z, Bruce, RB, Cork, um, let's see, Robert, welcome in. It's good to see all of you folks. Uh, for those of you who would like to join in and design along with me today, uh, all you need to do to download all of the assets and things that you're going to need to participate today is just to scroll down to the description below and download the starter file. All of the helpful links and resources are there. Um, and let's just dive into it, shall we? I've got a pretty cool thing planned for you. If you download the starter file, you will get a file that looks like this, and it says Photoshop Typography Challenge. Um, make your type stand out by adding animation effects with the timeline panel. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a letter in honor of the 36 days of type, and we are going to animate some elements swirling around within it. So you can see I've got an S here. Um, I've got some interesting elements kind of decorating that S, and then I have my uh, my color palette set up. And I'm just going to quickly show you how I created this. This is just a graphic that's set in here to kind of give you an idea of what we're doing, but I'm going to show you how we are going to pull this off. So I'm going to, real quick, I'm going to hide my info, I'm going to hide my colors, and I'm going to hide my project sample, and I'm going to actually group all of these. So I'm going to hit colors, hold shift, click info and then control or command G if you are working on a Mac just to group it all and then I'm going to hide all of that. Um, so now we have just a blank background here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw in a, a kind of a starter letter. Also, I don't think we have any music going. Let's get some music. I need my jams. I need my jams, y'all. All right. So here we go. Let's go ahead and throw a letter down on the canvas. I'm going to kill click T on my keyboard to access my type tool. I'm going to just click into my uh, my canvas here and I'm going to hit the letter S. We're just going to use an S for today and you can use whichever letter you want if you're working on the 36 days of type. Maybe you use the letter that is designated for today. Um, I like the letter S so I'm just going to use that. I'm going to control T or command T to free transform and I'm going to hold shift just to snap that aspect ratio um, and extend it so that we have a large S. Uh, in uh, the middle of our canvas today. Okay, so we've got our S. Um, I'm going to start using my shape tool to add in um, some shapes and things. Um, and what that is going to look like, let me go ahead and snag my shape tool, which is like right in the corner, right up here. Um, you can also hit U on your keyboard if you'd like to access that. Um, and if I pop myself over to the other side of the screen real quick, just so that you can see here, uh, when I right click uh, that uh, shape tool there, you can see I get a lot of different kinds of shapes and I'm going to use first the ellipse tool. So we're gonna go ahead and select the ellipse tool, which draws circles. Um, and we're going to drag in a few um, ellipses here. So I'm going to drag a little rounded shape just like that. We're gonna go ahead and change our color. Um, now I, I did hide my colors layer, uh, but before I did that, I added all of my colors into my libraries here so that I can just click um, and use my library. So if I decide that I want this to be a darker color, I can hit the blue there because um, I've got all my colors here. I've also added in this nice um, dark purple color and I also added a lighter color than our off white here and a darker color than our darkest blue here. You know, I've just added those. And the way that you add colors is you can hit this little plus button um, if it allow, oh, you know what? I'm let me go ahead and hit enter there on my ellipse. Um, if I hit my plus button, um, it will allow me to add in some colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to blue. Um, I am going to duplicate this with Control J or Command J if you're on a Mac, and I am going to Control T or Command T, and I'm going to just pull this down like so. Boom, just like that. 
and I might change the colors of some of these, um, but we'll do that in just a moment here. I'm going to duplicate myself one more and drag that down like so, because we're going to kind of create some semblance of water here, okay? Now, on my bottom most layer, I'm going to change that to the dark black, um, and I'm going to change the middle one to our medium uh, kind of blue color, and then we're going to change this, leave this as our light blue color. Um, and I might also bump this up just a tad. Boom, boom, boom. Um, all right, so now we have these three ellipses, which are pretty cool. I'm going to um, kind of group them with Control or Command G. Control T to transform them, and I'm just going to kind of hover them right here, right in there. Okay, now I might change the spacing of this after a while, but for now, this is fine. Um, I am going to ungroup them. I just kind of wanted to transform them together, so I'm going to go ahead and ungroup those layers, and I'm going to right click them and say create clipping mask. So now, as you can see, all of these are clipped into my S. Uh, I'm going to create some clouds real quick because I want to kind of put a nighttime scene in the middle here. So the way that I'm going to create clouds is, again, um, I am going to drag out an ellipse like so. Uh, we'll drag out another ellipse like this and then we'll drag out another ellipse like that okay and i am going to select all of these i am going to um, actually what we can do is we can control e um, or command e just to merge all selected layers um, and then i'm going to rasterize that layer um, now that might look strange you know we have kind of this just this collection of weird circles but what we're going to do is mask it into um, a shape of a cloud so i'm going to select my rectangular marquee tool and i will just drag this here like so and i am going to come down to the bottom here and hit my masking button so it kind of masks out the top there and gives us this nice little um cloud layer now i actually might want to go back before I merged this and add one more marquee. Um, let me go ahead and actually transform these and drag these over so I can really see it. I might want to add one more marquee, um, a kind of elliptical shape here, um, just to give it a little bit more oomph. Um, all right, there we go. And I might control uh, T this just to transform, drag that up, there we go. Um, and then we'll control E or command E to merge. Then we will rasterize it and then we will mask it. So let's grab our marquee, boom, go ahead and hit our mask button. And now we have this nice cloud shape here. Okay, so we're gonna put this right there and we're going to um, go ahead and convert or actually cr create clipping mask. So that's also clipped into our shape. And we'll make one more cloud. Um, so with our shape tool, we'll make a smaller cloud. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a little marquee like this uh, or a little uh, elliptical um, ellipse here. Um, and then we will draw one more like so. And then we'll draw like a tiny one like that maybe transform that over and just kind of drag it, okay? Um, one of the things that I kind of wanna do here is change my fill color um, back to this blue. So I'll come through here and just select them uh, and change my fill color up here at the top to that blue. Um, I will select them all, ta-da! Uh, we will merge them with Control E rasterize it boom and then same thing we'll grab our marquee tool we will kind of cut it basically like that and merge it so now we have another cloud and we will right click and create clipping mask there we go um drag that over here uh we're gonna need a moon because this is kind of a nighttime scene so underneath um these clouds i will um, I'll select like the topmost um, little ground water layer here, grab our elliptical uh, shape right here, and I will just drag out a circle holding shift 
to kind of snap that aspect ratio to a perfect circle. And then if I press down on the space bar, I can actually move it around um, in, in its entirety. So we'll place that right there and we will change that to this nice green color. Um, and then the last thing we're going to do is add some stars. So let's go ahead and add some stars. I am going to up above all of this stuff. I'm going to right click and grab my rectangular marquee tool. Um, and I'll zoom in here just so I can kind of show you how I create these stars. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, drag out. Actually, we might use, we're actually not going to use the, um, the square or rectangle tool. What we're going to do actually is use the polygon tool. And if I switch over here one more time, just so that you can see, if I right click there, uh, we have the polygon tool. So we're going to select that one um, right there. And I am going to drag out a polygon holding shift um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to four sides. So right here you can see in my properties panel that pops out, um, I can change the amount of faces it has. I can drag on the slider if I want to put a lot of faces on this, but I'm just going to edit the number value here. Go ahead and put four and hit enter. So it is a square, but the reason why we're using the polygon tool here instead of the rectangular tool is because the polygon tool allows me to edit the corners of this. Um, now I am going to give you a tip here because what we're going to do is make these little tiny starbursts with four points. Um, but what we need to make sure we do first is now that we've gone from like a polygon with five sides to a square with four sides, um, we're going to make sure that our width and height are exactly the same. Otherwise, when we start to point our star, it'll be a little bit skewed. So I'm going to, you on yours, you might have this locked here, this to, to lock the aspect so that if I change this one to like two, it also changes the height. But what I want to do is unlock them and change this to like a 1.5. Okay, and then it doesn't change this height and then we'll change the height manually to match 1.5. Enter. Now we have a perfect square um, and we can come in here and we can point our edges. So I'm gonna just drag this in like so. So we've got like this little star burst shape and then we're gonna use this slider over here which rounds our corners. So we're gonna round our corners just a little bit like that. Uh, and then I can free transform and what I'm gonna do is rotate holding shift to snap and we're just gonna rotate that straight up and down just like that. So I can come in here and I can place my stars if I hold shift and resize, I can place my stars wherever I want. If I hit V on my keyboard to access my move tool, then I can just kind of drag around. Uh, we'll control J or command J to duplicate and then with my V, uh, key press to access move again, I can drag another star Control or Command J, drag another star, and we'll do that. Um, actually, I think this is fine. If you want, you can use big stars. You can also duplicate and add um, some little stars um, here and there if you like, but I'm gonna leave it as simple as possible just for now. So now we have um, these, these stars in here. We've got our moon, we've got some clouds, and we have some water down at the bottom, okay? Um, and what I'm going to do is quickly do a little mini tutorial on coloring things in uh, because coloring this stuff in so we're not just using flat shapes is very important um, when it comes to this particular challenge. So um, we are going to be animating this. We're going to animate our um, waves moving back and forth and we're going to animate our stars moving up and down and our clouds crossing paths like that. All right. Um, and when you animate in Photoshop and you export either an MP4, which you can do, um, a lot of people don't know that you can export, you can render a video and export an MP4 video, or you can actually save for web legacy and save out a GIF. The problem with saving out animations from Photoshop, especially when you are saving a GIF is the GIFs have, um, limited colors. However, what, one thing that we've been doing throughout this challenge is we've been painting with a dissolve mode on our brush, which means um, we can use 
a, a very limited an, a amount of colors and we're not getting actually any gradients in between even though that dissolve does appear as a gradient and this is what I mean when I say this so I'm going to control shift in or command shift in if you're using a Mac just to create a new layer real quick and I'm going to color in my S so I'll hit B on my keyboard to access my brush make sure caps lock is not on and I have a soft round brush which is just available to any of you who have Photoshop it will be default brush and I have my brush mode up here set to dissolve. Um, so when I have this set like this and I tap, you can see that it adds like a soft round brush stroke here. But if I zoom in really, really close, since we're using dissolve, this is actually pixel perfect. Okay. And when it's not on dissolve, if I control Z or command Z just to undo and I switch it to normal um, and I click, you can see that when I zoom in here, it's very smooth. Um, and what it actually is giving me is a, a gradient of different colors. But when we use the dissolve, because it is pixel perfect, um, let me see, okay, there we go. Because it is pixel perfect, um, we can get this nice textury noisy um, effect without using more than just this dark blue color and that that light green color in the back. So it actually helps to minimize the amount of colors, which means Photoshop doesn't have to do any compression weirdness in the background, which means exactly like the, the exact piece that you animate and make will export exactly as it looks rather than some of the colors changing and having to choose between which colors you're going to be using. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open my library, select um, a dark blue, and I'm just going to start kind of tapping in here with my brush and creating a nice gradient um, of sky here. I'm going to select, if I can select my green color there, um, just to kind of get this going. Um, we will put, actually I think I want the, I think I want that green down here actually, and then we'll grab this white, this off-white color if I can snag that and throw that there just to get kind of a, a bright color. We'll grab this green and kind of bring this in here and then we'll put this darker color up at the top. Okay, um, and you can come through and you can animate, uh, or not animate, excuse me, you can color in all of your uh, different elements here. Uh, and I'll show you how to do that real quick. So I'm going to um, rasterize these layers, these, um, if I can, Maybe I will just um, control E. No, I won't. What I'll do is I'll convert it to a smart object um, and then I'll rasterize it. Um, so we will rasterize, convert to smart object and rasterize. Um, and the reason why I'm doing this, the reason why I'm rasterizing is so that I can lock the transparency and paint within our clouds and not go out of the lines. So I'll snag um, our large cloud here and I will grab this dark purple color and I will lock our transparency with this little checkerboard image here and I can kind of start coloring in uh, my, my clouds, okay? Start doing something like that, boom just so that you can still kind of see them, but they're different colors. We can color in all of these elements if I want. Um, now I have, I do want to say that I have created a file like this and I have animated it because we are not going to be able to animate every teeny tiny moving piece of this before the end of our stream. So you will see a finished product. Um, but the last thing I'm gonna do before we animate is I'm going to apply a stroke to my S because it's gonna pull everything out of the canvas, okay? So if I double click my, um, my S layer here, I can click stroke uh, and I'm going to leave it as that, you know, that white color and I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, boom. Um, so now we have our S, we've got some elements in there um, and while not all of them are painted nice and neat, um, I've, I've shown you how to paint it um, and you can paint all of yours because you will have more than 30 minutes to do yours. Um, so we have created our S, we've put our elements inside, we've colored some of them in, we've added a stroke to our S, and now we're gonna come up to window uh, and select timeline because this will add our Photoshop timeline um, into our workspace. I'm just gonna drag it down till it hovers blue at the bottom and release, and that will add our timeline here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and expand our layers. I am going to zoom out so that we can see our entire S here, okay? 
Uh, and then I'm going to move myself over to the other side of the screen just so you can see the entirety of the timeline panel. Now you can create a video timeline animation here, or you can create a frame animation, but we're going to be creating a video animation here. So I'm going to make sure that's selected and then just cr press create video timeline. Now what this does is this adds all of our layers, all of our layers from our Photoshop document um, as elements of an animation. And what we're gonna be working with in the timeline animation today is um, adding keyframes for position. So um, what I can do is, let's come over to our larger cloud, which um, you may have better luck here if you rename your layers, um, but I know that it's Ellipse uh, 5 and I can also see a little preview of it, so I know that's our larger cloud. And what I'm gonna do is make sure that my little um, placeholder uh, thing here is set to the beginning of my animation. I'm going to open this drop down menu and I'll scroll here and you can see I can do, I can change style, opacity and position, but we're going to add a keyframe for position. So I'm gonna go ahead and click position. Now I'm gonna scroll to the middle of my animation like so, and I am going to with V uh, access my move tool. I'm gonna select my cloud, um, hold shift and I'm just gonna drag it over like so, okay? And then I'm going to, you can see how when I released that, added a keyframe. Then I'm gonna drag to the end of my video here and do the same thing all with my move tool. I'll select it, hold shift, and then drag it right back into place. Um, and then if I come back to the end here, you can see how that moves, right? So if I press space on my keyboard, um, it's going to do a little bit of rendering, a little bit of thinking, but you can see that my cloud cruises over to one side following um, the position that I set that second keyframe in, and then it begins to follow back to the left there um, to arrive in the position I set that third keyframe for. And then you can see that after that rendering, it's got this nice smooth bounce left and right. Okay which is pretty fun. So what, what are we doing on time? We got just a couple of minutes here. So I'm gonna show you um, how to just animate a few more things. Uh, we'll come up, uh, I think that it would be cool to maybe do a bounce with some of these stars. So we'll select a star here. I wanna make sure that I know which one this is. Um, it is that one. Let's actually, let's work with this one right here. So we'll select our polygon and it selects here in our timeline panel for us. Um, and I am really quick going to do the same thing. I will drag my um, placeholder to the beginning. I'll open that drop down menu. I will hit position. Oh, let's see. You know what? There we go. Okay. Um, this is a shape layer. So I'm going to actually control Z and I'm going to make sure that this is rasterized. So we will add a position. We'll drag this to the center of our layer here. Um, and we will, with our move tool, bump it down. Okay. And then we will drag to the end and we will bump it right back up. Now you wanna make sure that when you bump things up and down that you are um, making sure that you place them in the exact same position. Um, and something that can help you with that when you're doing it is to um, have your uh, grids turned on so that all of your elements snap back into place when you um, reposition them and all of that. Um, and so if I hit space on my keyboard, you can see that now we've got a cloud moving and we've got a star bouncing up and down. And really the animation process is only this. Um, you'll just have to do it for multiple elements there, but I've kind of got you started here with a few different um, elements moving up and down and left and right. Um, and when you would like to uh, export your video, all you have to do after you've animated multiple stars and multiple clouds and maybe um, animated your waves down here moving left and right so it looks like waves crossing, all you have to do is in this little hamburger menu right here, go ahead and click that on the timeline panel and hit render video. And it will allow you to name your file, to select a folder to export it to, and then you can edit and customize the format options and the presets and all of those things. Um, and then just hit render. And what it will do is it will actually export an MP4 file for you. Um, and this is what I ended up with when I did my test run. 
of this challenge. So let me go ahead and pull this up here for you. I'm going to just drag this down and let you see it. Boom. So I've got my little S. You can see I um, colored in all my waves, my background, my, my, my moon, my clouds. Um, I've got some different sized stars. And if I press play here, you can see my waves at the bottom move left and right, my clouds crisscross, and some of my stars bounce. Uh, so this is a really, this is a really cool way to do things. Um, I, I think we have maybe a minute or so here that I can talk to you. Yeah. yeah. Um, so when you're animating in Photoshop, there obviously are less details and things that you can do than if you animated in like um, After Effects or Character Animator or Premiere or any of those things adding effects, but it really is fun. If you're like me and you love using Photoshop, then understanding the capabilities of animation within Photoshop is a really fun way to do things. Um, you can stay all in the same program where you're illustrating and designing and animate it. And it also is a really great way just to export a very small, short animation that you can post to social media. Um, you can also export a GIF, as I said. So if we come up here to File, export and save for web legacy you can export a gif that way rather than an mp4 that is all i have planned for you folks today i do have to take off because i don't want to get cut off but please tune in tomorrow because tomorrow is cosplay day and it's going to be awesome i hope to see you all there please stay tuned for more epic design coming up after me and i will see you folks later